Welcome back. We are joined on the couch, as promised, by representatives of Belize High School. And the topic this morning is going to be the 35th model OAS conference participants. Uh, good morning to Principal Jamie Usher. Uh, we're also joined by Ethan Singh, uh, Zachary Ortiz, morning. and Caitlin Haylock. Good morning. Good morning and good morning. welcome. Welcome back home as well, I yes, should say. Yes, we got in yes. yesterday. Yes. Back to the warmth. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, I, I want to start off by just uh, talking a bit, Jamie, about uh, this is the second year mm -hmm. that uh, Belize High School is taking a group of students to participate in the Model OAS conference. And uh, let's go back to how you were able to tap into this opportunity and uh, how you select which students would participate. Okay, so um, the OAS uh, hosts this conference. This is the 35th year. Yeah. Um, however, last year we had a um, message sent to us by the OAS rep for Belize as mm -hmm. an invitation. Mm -hmm. And he kind of tapped into the fact that we were willing to do things a little differently. And so uh, Mr. Starrett Green mm -hmm. kind of wrote, kind of nudging me, come mm -hmm. on, Miss Jamie, this sounds like you. And mm -hmm. so right away, I forwarded it to my parents. And I, I actually got caught off guard because um, right away, 12 students snatched up the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so we have been credited with the fact that we have um, parents who see the benefit in simulations and participations mm -hmm. of this kind. And so this year, the students, um, we diversified a little. Mm -hmm. So last year, all 12 students were seniors. Mm -hmm. So we did have some of them come back and try to pass on a lot of what they shared. But mm -hmm. this year, we've, we mixed it up a little. And um, we took along seniors and juniors. Okay. And um, so now we have two, senior, two uh, juniors with us who are part of the returning delegation. We're already planning for the 36th <laughs> model. Okay. So they had to write papers um, on draft resolutions. Yes. And then we read it. And the ones who were really enthusiastic and ready to participate got selected. So that was the application process, writing the draft yes. resolution. Well, we have a whole program that you have to apply to. So you okay. have to sign on things like you're willing to dress up, you're willing to do um, the photos, you're willing to do the grades. Mm -hmm. um, so passports in order, visas in yeah. order. So yeah. it's a whole package deal, but definitely the draft resolution is a big part. Now let's talk about the individual and the collective experiences uh, having participated in this event. Let's start with you, Zach. What was the personal experience for you? Well, it was a great experience for me, one, because I'm also a very, I'm a very social person. Mm -hmm. So MOAS is an entire social event where you get to meet a lot of new people from around the world and you meet um, many very intelligent students because those students aren't just any of your everyday students. A lot of them have been preparing for this for the entire year, if you want to call it that, because for some of them, it's grades and stuff. My specific committee was hemispheric security, and our delegation was received the country Argentina. So when I was there, I was basically trying to get the implementation of a resolution paper on the implementation and the cooperation of OAS member states to the implementation of national drug policies. Mm -hmm. So it was a great um, experience for me because when you're in your working groups, it makes you feel so excited and thrilled when you're with all the other students in there trying to get your topic in. Because if you're representing your country and you're not a voice, then your country just stands out there and nothing's going to happen for your country. Mm -hmm. So you have to put yourself out there in your working groups. And that's something that I enjoy doing along with the other delegates there because it's a very nice experience to meet new people and, <clears throat> and argue your points. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's the same thing with Zach. It's a very thrilling experience, and I personally am very outgoing, and I enjoy sitting in debates and stuff. So for me, it was very interesting and amazing to be able to sit in with all these other students from all over the world, just sitting there and discussing your working groups and topics. And my specific topic was sustainable development for good governance, and I was representing Argentina, our entire delegation as well. So what I did was that I sat down and I looked at all Argentina's environmental problems, and I linked it to all the... Um, Laws. Go ahead. I linked it to all their laws and tried to figure out, okay, 
these are the environmental problems. These are this is what they've been doing for the past years to try to correct it. With the 2030 agenda, because that was a part of the topic as well, with that coming into play and with Argentina just ratifying it, how can they use the 2030 agenda to kind of work on and continue fixing and fixing all their environmental problems? So for me, it was very interesting because. As I know, as you know, Argentina is a very affluent country, so when you look at it and you see all the environmental problems that they've been going through, it's, it really just says, okay, you know, despite the fact that a country has the status, they do go through what everyone goes through, and you really do have to sit down and try to fix and think how you can help them work out these problems. Interesting. And Zach? Ethan. Oh, Ethan. Oh, sorry, Ethan, yeah. Well, for me, this was a thrilling new experience for me. Mm -hmm. um, I won't lie, I was a bit nervous as for at first, but when I got there, that nervousness sort of went away as I got more experience with the topic. Well, my topic in particular was judicial and political affairs, specifically dealing with the Colombian peace process. So we were able to get a lot of things done on it, considering that Colombia just signed their peace treaty with mm -hmm. the FARC rebels. and. There, there's a lot of new things I learned, such as how to negotiate properly. Like, um, I got new skills in negotiation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Look out, mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> now, the format itself is that the country, the the school is asked to represent a particular country. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you guys were uh, representing Argentina. Mm -hmm. The level of research, and this is one I think uh, I would imagine one of the greatest benefits that your students are learning to look beyond our borders mm -hmm. and understanding the realities and the dynamics of how other countries function. Um, let's talk about how the school itself helps to foster that type of environment. So it's, is it only the children who will participate in the model OAS who help with the research? Or uh, do you have the other students involved as well? So that, that, that uh, knowledge of, of looking outside goes beyond those who participate. Well, first to let you know, the, the actual um, selection of the delegates mm -hmm. can be very competitive in other schools. Yeah. Given our size and our willingness, um, we do feel a little bit of that competition. And so a lot of the debate club preparation um, helps with the research yeah. and the negotiation style. Mm. So we actually did a mock simulation. We actually did, um, we were to participate in a debate hosted by the Youth Enhancement Services. Mm. Um, unfortunately, the other school didn't feel prepared. So we went ahead and did it within our school. Mm -hmm. um, so we do offer a lot of uh, whole school cooperation. So mm -hmm. while they do have an individual responsibility to prepare, mm -hmm. um, we do get assistance from other students not going because we also participate in another OAS simulation called the ASIA. Mm -hmm. And so in the ASIA, nine new students plus one that was on this delegation will go to Panama in March to participate in Latin American um, conference hosted by Harvard. Wow. So Harvard undergrad students pick a Latin American country every year to host mm -hmm. that one. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we participate also as the only school from Belize. Mm -hmm. And then going forward, um, we want to grow the, the number of students that have participated in this. So we also want to make sure that the invitation extends to whatever we're able to do, school to school, mm -hmm. um, as well because we've seen the benefit to all our relationships in terms of participating in this. So as Ethan said, his negotiation skills improve. <laughs> um, being able to articulate and dialogue and listen, not ready to answer, but listen willing to understand and, and, and give up something um, is something that the foreign minister was just here speaking about, the value of an international organization assisting as a mediator. So while you do have a mediator, the people who sit at the table still have to have certain responsibilities to be able to, to reach a, a, an agreement. Because if you come hard and fast, yeah. doesn't matter what the mediator does, doesn't matter what the other party does, you will not There's get a involved. Yeah. As from an academic perspective, how does this exercise uh, bolster the curriculum at Belize High School? Okay, well, um, for the reason I just said, so what it does, first and foremost, to the motto of our school, learners today, leaders tomorrow, 
Um, the first thing is our name is the Belize High School. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that it does is stirs our consciousness as a Belizean. So these are all very proud citizens. Um, we dress in a travel shirt and right away we got noticed for the, our, our MM on the back and they're like, Belize, where are you going? What sport are you playing? <laughs> and I said, you know, we don't travel to mm -hmm. this uh, time for sports. I yeah. said, we're going for an academic reason. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing is it, it strengthens their leadership skills because mm -hmm. all our students, they're still teenagers. They're still very versed in the online platforms. They are um, well-read students, so they know a lot of what's going on. Ethan is a major history buff. Um, so they, they are able to then put together the experience, the knowledge, and the networking that when they're getting ready to do anything, it then comes into play without them even realizing it. So for me as a teacher, it's a personal connection because I get to see a transformation. So I do get emotional when I see them all dressed up in their suit and ties and, mm -hmm. and they sit at the table that the actual ambassadors sit. Mm -hmm. And I say, you know, this, this is our kids. This is our dream. This is a dream of the Belize High School. We wanted to set our students apart. And so we, we have these, these great guys here. So I want to I wanna tap into your personal experiences. You've spoke about your individual preparations and your presentations, but sometimes you have an idea of what you're getting yourself into and you get there and you have that moment where uh, it's, either, it's either more challenging or just a lot more rewarding than you expected it to be. I want you to share one of those experiences with me. Perhaps uh, it was interacting with your other students. Perhaps it was the awe of being in, in the locations itself. Well, for me, my main experience there that really pushed me in the debate to do much better mm -hmm. was when our delegation got the chance to meet Ambassador Mendez. Yeah. Because it was the first day of debate and everyone was sitting in the entire Hall of America is waiting for the debate to start. And our little delegation there, we just excluded ourselves for a second because we had a meeting with the ambassador and mm -hmm. a, a lot of the students were watching us like, where are you guys going? Mm -hmm. Are you guys just leaving before? They didn't know that we had a meeting with Ambassador Mendez and when we actually got into the room with Ambassador Mendez, he was very nice mm -hmm. and he was a very open person. And he just really made us feel like us Belizeans don't have to feel anywhere, I mean, any way because we're away from home. Mm -hmm. So when, I was, when we were in the room with, um, with the Ambassador, he spoke to us and told us before we left, he told us how, just always remember that you guys are Belizeans. Yeah. And you guys are here to m make Belize proud. And no matter what, he's very proud of us for what we're doing there. Mm -hmm. And he says, the way how we spoke to him and carried ourselves in the room with him, he was very impressed in the way that we were able mm -hmm. to carry ourselves as students, as high school students to this debate conference. And that's something that really pushed me and motivated me to do much better in the conference. Mm -hmm. And it was just, a, it just put us a little bit more on top of the other students, if you ask me. <laughs> well, I mean, let's not forget, assist, uh, Ambassador Mendez is a Belizean, but also the Assistant yeah. Secretary General of the OAS. Yeah. So that's, for the other kids, that's like, you he guys got a special provided, privilege. Yeah, he provided the opening remarks. Yeah. So we were the only delegation to meet with him, mm -hmm. you know, on the side, so. Did, did it help you to understand the magnitude of him being elected to that position as well? It's not. Yeah, okay. Katie. Who has the mic? Right. <laughs> <laughs> For me, along with Zach, it was meeting the ambassadors, both Andrews and Mendez, because I mean, like Zach said, it really does put you in the spot. Like these people are Belizeans and they did get into this position. So even though we're still high school students, you know, with a lot more work and preparation, we can get there as well. But also in addition, when I was in my committee, we had OAS specialists and OAS um, people coming into the room just to give us a little brief on our topics and to help us push through. And one of the things that really was really set apart for me and really opened my mind was when one of the specialists, she, was, she had a speech problem and she was mute. So she was signing her words and everything and she had her interpreter across from her and he was translating her and he really did make, had me thinking and like this lady, she has a disability, but yet she's in this position at the OAS and she's representing all these people because her work was to be able to represent people like the indigenous people, people like her, people who don't have a voice to mm -hmm. be able to talk out there. She was their voice. So to have her with this disability in there, in that room, in this position, being able to still get across her point, it really did 
of me thinking like if she can get there, I can get there as well. Yeah. And it really did serve as a motivation for me to keep pushing and to keep yeah. getting my point across. Nice. And you, Ethan. <laughs> well, my awe-inspiring moment was being in the same room as so many world leaders have been before. Mm. So you have the, you're literally standing in spots where President Obama, um, the Prime Minister of Canada have been, and just being there sort of filled me with confidence that allowed me to, it sort of allowed me to be, not be as nervous when talking, because I was the actual speaker for my committee. Yeah. Okay. He got elected. Yeah, okay. so it was pretty... That means you really impressed your working group, huh? <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> you can be proud of that. There's part nothing of it, wrong. Part yeah. of your research for Argentina shows that they are proud people. Yeah. So they did take out that with them because they have to be, you know... Yeah, yeah. yeah being there sort of gave me the courage to volunteer and mm -hmm. when nobody else wanted to, I was there representing our, our resolution to the rest of the delegates there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell me something. This is a first-hand uh, experience with regards to diplomacy as well. Mm -hmm. What has that been like for you guys being at the forefront? It's, uh, you're representing Belize, albeit you're, you're parts or members of different teams. In this case, it's Argentina, right? Yeah. But what have you learned? What is your takeaway when it comes to diplomacy? and how you wheel and deal in the house? Well, my takeaway from it is that nothing is just given to you. Mm -hmm. If you want to be heard, you must speak up. It's a thing that Ms. Jamie told us before we went there was, if you don't try and push yourself and raise that placard to speak, you're never going to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Because in the debates, no one really cares if you don't speak, because that just gives them more of a chance to voice their opinions over it. Yeah. So if you don't push yourself to speak, then you're never going to get out there. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I really took away because a lot of people who aren't heard or who believe that no one is he listening to them are usually some of those people who aren't pushing themselves enough out there in the right places. So when we were there, it was like an amazing experience when you just, it's thrilling raising your placard and you're waiting for the speaker to say, Argentina, or just call on you for you to speak. Mm -hmm. And when they don't call on you and they call on someone else, you're like, next time, next time, I'll get there the next time. <laughs> and you raise your placard again to try and speak. Yeah. And also a very, a thing that I learned was the negotiating part. That mm -hmm. was a huge part there because we're, you have to also remember we're fighting based off our country, Argentina. Mm -hmm. But if we're writing a resolution paper with other countries, we have to remember those are the, all the other countries we have to satisfy also mm -hmm. with our resolution paper. Mm -hmm. So when we're negotiating with them, you have to remember it may be beneficial to your country, but it can hurt another country mm -hmm. the way how their country is set up. Yeah. So that also brings in that big play of negotiating and understanding of the opposing side's point of position mm -hmm. if you want to yeah uh, their position sorry so that's a big role for me that helped me there with the um diplomacy part mm -hmm. and Caitlin wanted to say something <coughs> regarding the the Facebook um yeah. impact mm. yeah. in terms of that you know like nowadays people who were poorly represented are not not they don't have a voice to them they normally resort 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 sorry to social media to be able to voice their opinions and whatnot and I think that's one of the things that really has to change because even though you're voicing your opinion out there, it might not be the best platform for you to get out there and to voice your opinion. And the OAS, the MOAS, was a real stimulation to be able to get out there and to voice your opinion because like Zach said, you're with all these people and although you might have a resolution that benefits your country, there are other countries out there that might not benefit from that. So you really got to get out there and negotiate for that and help to be a voice for your people because your people want to see this push. Your people want to see a change mm -hmm. in all the things that are going wrong in their country. So as an ambassador, you really have to get out there at the table and raise your placard and be as open and as voiceful as you can to be able to get your point out there because when you're debating the resolutions in there, there are literally ambassadors there, people representing the countries that want to tear down your resolution and don't want your resolution to pass. And if you strongly believe in something, you got to be able to ra keep raising your placard, keep putting yeah. up your placard and keep fighting for your point because you know 
that even though, and even as negotiating, you know that even though this can benefit your country, you've negotiated already, so it benefits other countries as well. So you got, just got to get out there and push your point and keep raising your placard until you know that your resolution will pass. Mm. Good. Tenacious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very tenacious. <laughs> so I want to I wanna talk just a, a bit about keeping this type of program sustained mm -hmm. at your school because obviously this is a once in a lifetime experience and for many uh, young people understanding the OAS is simply reading about the model and how it works and how it's supposed mm -hmm. to function. Mm -hmm. Getting that first hand experience is something, I mean just by the way they speak about the representation uh, they get it, and, and it takes some of us till adulthood to be able to understand <laughs> how important these things are. So I, I want to talk about being able to sustain it within the school mm -hmm. um, and how you plan to build on it as well. Well, th this is exactly why we're here. So yeah. we are grateful for the opportunity to share because we just don't want to highlight our participation in it. Yeah. We want to keep on having the, the benefits of it come across to everybody who is observing our school. Yeah. So our school um, intends to keep having the participation in a couple of ways. We want to keep the internal mm -hmm. um, opportunities to, to debate and negotiate and mm -hmm. to take on leadership within the school community. And we also want to keep extending the invitation for other schools, especially in Belize City, that's a little bit more logistical, um, practical, yeah. um, to come to our school for these types of simulations mm -hmm. because you have to start off some point, you know. So the, the first invitation that came for, for the ASIA, it was mm -hmm. nervous. It was, it was six students getting on a plane to a place. No, no other Belize High School had been before. Yeah. And for it to be the Belize High School, um, we don't mind taking on that responsibility, but we also want to make sure that um, other students realize they can join. We can take more than one delegation as our school, so yeah. um, we, we want to make sure that it's something that we have highlighted the benefits of. Um, I definitely am proud of every single one of my, my student international ambassadors. Mm -hmm. We've taken um, upwards of 50 students abroad now. And we do want to keep offering the, the chance for everybody to, to, I guess, practice firsthand. As uh, the foreign minister was saying, he still remembers things that um, Father Stokoe told him. Yeah. And so um, that personal connection between teacher and student, mm -hmm. you never know what you say that will stick. Mm -hmm. So I smile when they said something that stuck with me because it's like, <laughs> Okay, which, which one was it? So I, I want to definitely keep asking for all teachers to realize the impact that they have yeah. on a student um, throughout the four years that we have them as high school. Mm. Um, we just meet, recently met as the BAPS um, Conference of Principals for mm -hmm. Belize, and we spoke about the, the uh, enthusiasm that we need to trickle down to every teacher. Because mm. you do, you sitting there, you remember yeah. your favorite teacher, you remember your least favorite teacher. So um, we, we do want to remember that these things stick with us. So this experience, I hope that they for, will forever have that, that little that branding moment. Yeah. And so the brand of the Belize High School is that we are not afraid to take the lead, but we are also not afraid to encourage other people to follow because you don't have to necessarily reinvent everything. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can showcase a lot of what we've done, but we also want to be there willing to help and partner and get other people involved because it, it's kind of come naturally to us with our yeah. parents. I have to acknowledge the parents of Belize High School. Um, obviously, we could have teachers, we could have a building, but if we have no students, we have no parents who are paying full bill and receipt um, because we are fully private. Um, we have had engaging parents from day one to now year six. So we're six years old. Um, we keep learning and we're committed to keep making sure that our leaders will continue to because another takeaway for me yeah. that they probably don't realize yet is that in the future these mm -hmm. same 400 students mm -hmm. from 10 countries and 22 schools from all over the world those names that they've interacted with definitely they're gonna be 10 percent of them that will be world leaders yeah. Yeah. that's how it starts because if you look at the current world leaders now yeah. all of them did some type of simulation in high school because this is where it starts this is where the seed is planted mm -hmm. and so that for them to say i know that name or mm -hmm. i know that you know so that's that's where i that's my personal benefit from this opportunity mm -hmm. and that's why i will continue because i i definitely believe that every job that 
my students take on. I want them to make sure that they're doing it and that they want to do it because that's yeah. the motivation. So you get up because you enjoy meeting mm -hmm. people like us. Definitely. I go to school <laughs> because I enjoy seeing that little switch where you know yeah. they come in and then you, you're there for that moment when they say, I get it, Miss Jamie. I get why I have to sit in my geometry <laughs> and I get why I have to. And it might not come till five years later, yeah. 10 years but later. But that's why but we come. keep showing up. Yeah. And that's why <laughs> I keep telling them manners will go a long way. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. All right. So uh, I want to close off in terms of uh, taking a look at the reflections once again from the students. And I, I want to ask, having had the experience of preparing and traveling and representing yourself and your country there, how has it impacted how you view? I mean, we just had a very uh, important conversation prior to your segment. And uh, obviously, it should be able to, to resonate with you understanding how the OAS works. So how much now do you have a better understanding or a shifted perspective in terms of Belize's issues that we face? Yeah. Zach wow. is ready. <laughs> I keep on crying. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, being there, we got to see how important the role of, uh, whether it be international or regional like mm -hmm. CARICOM, how important these organizations are to, well, building peace, uh, uh, sustained democracy mm -hmm. it it's you get to see how important they are and being there in the roles of all these countries advocating for peace democracy mm -hmm. um, security you realize that sometimes there are countries that can't do this all on their own like mm -hmm. there are some smaller countries that and there's also countries that don't have military mm -hmm. so it really takes a job of these larger organizations, whether it be Organization for American States, uh, CARICOM, uh, United Nations, which mm -hmm. is worldwide. Mm -hmm. It takes it takes their responsibility to look out for these smaller countries and see it that they will grow to be, I can say, better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anybody else have a different perspective? Well, my perspective on it was, is also like how Ethan said, mm -hmm. the major um, job of these organizations is to ensure that these smaller countries have their chance to speak out too. Mm -hmm. Because normally those smaller countries, like Ethan also said, don't have big militaries or they're not as, they don't have as big a voice as other countries. Mm -hmm. So these organizations are there to help benefit the countries. And these organizations are there to, in a way, to make those countries just a little bit more known to the other countries so mm -hmm. they can be a bit more supportive in the, yeah. of the options or the um, decision making of those countries. And they're giving, well not Belize, they're giving like all the other countries a name out there so that how these other countries if they can, they can also help these countries on their stands and help them better their economy and their, their whole perspective. Okay. And in addition to all that, the OAS for One, it brings together all these member countries to sit at one table to unite as one and it really just encourages that trade and that technology trade across the board because while in Belize we may be doing some things in other countries, they may not be doing the same thing. So when you sit in this setting with all these other countries, all these other ambassadors relating, you really do get the opportunity to see what they're doing and how that, how you can bring that into your country to benefit your country and others. So it really just unites everybody as one to be able to trade across the board. Okay, can great. I also yeah. just, mm -hmm. I just want to say that part of the uh, encouragement for um, the future is that these students are engaged in this by the OAS because they intend to look at the creativity of the resolutions. Yeah. And so they are tapping into these young minds um, in an effort to, to implement some of what their ideas have been. So the OAS is definitely tapping into the future presently. And so they've had a chance to put out their ideas mm -hmm. and you never know something that they've thought about at their committee levels might reach the actual OAS. So the program coordinators, Ms. Abalo and Ms. Uh, Jacinth Martin, they are ambassadors to the OAS itself. So they coordinate this in an effort to, to brain pool or yeah. to, to get a, a, a consensus of what the young people, the young intelligent people of the Americas. So that, that's, the, that's the future that these leaders are shaping. 
Well, we want to say congratulations on uh, being able to participate. Kudos to Belize High School for pushing your students in this direction. And we can definitely see the benefits of having uh, this type of exposure. So congratulations, and thank you for being here to share the experience. Thank you, thank you too. All right. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we'll be looking at gift ideas for Chris, courtesy of the Loft Boutique. So stay tuned.